Welcome back to the home of Crybaby Performance, where we try, they cry. Okay, we're back on our 160 build today, and we're starting to assemble the engine. We like to oil every part and use more oil than you need. Make sure all the parts have <clears throat> enough oil on them before assembly. Okay, so we like to put grease on this side seal, and because um, <clears throat> that seals the... Uh, crank into the engine and helps it move along that seal nice and smooth This is a clear grease, so I like it because it's cleaner Now we're on to the crank I use plenty of oil you want to get the oil in the bearings on that journal on the uh, cam gear oil is your friend at this point if you don't use enough oil the parts when you fire it up won't have enough lubrication. We put oil on the piston pin, on the rings, on the whole piston, on the skirt, on the sleeve, the pin, oil it up. You wanna use a lot of oil so everything's nice and free and lubricated on startup. <clears throat> now on the rod, uh, where the pen is pointed to, we like to break that edge just a little bit with a piece of sandpaper so that the oil can get between the rod and the crank journal. Just, so, just break that edge ever so slightly. Okay, next is the piston ring tool. This is a generic one from the auto parts store, but I cut half the material away from it so it makes it easier to turn it in and out. Make sure you put oil inside this uh, tool so that the piston will slide in and out of the tool. Next we're going to line up the rings. You want to make sure that the rings <coughs> are not in line with each other and so I showed you where the top ring, the second ring, and the two oil rings are all spaced out so that it's not letting any of the air um, pass through them. Next, we're gonna put the tool onto the piston rings. You have to open up the tool quite wide, slip it over the rings, make sure everything's oiled up, and then we're gonna push the piston into the cylinder. <clears throat> we wanna make sure the crank journal is facing away from the rod so that you don't hit it when you push the piston into the cylinder. Next, we're gonna use a soft object. I'm using the butt end of a hammer to lightly tap the piston into the cylinder. Make sure your tool is nice and square at the edge of your cylinder so the piston slides through the tool easily into the cylinder. Next, we're gonna put oil on the um, crank and the rod and um, the tappet holes, the bearings, more oil is a good thing to keep everything lubricated. And tighten your rod up and look at the torque specs we're going to post here for your rod. Always use a torque wrench on the rod bolts. Next, I'm showing you the lifter because there's critical measurements in the book. There's nothing really to be gained. I'm just showing you the measurements as they're in the USAC manual. <clears throat> This measurement is a little big um, according to their measurements. The length of the lifter is another measurement they give in the USAC rules. Again, I'm showing you the measurements. There's nothing really to be gained. Um, they have a minimum weight for a lifter. I've never been able to get to the minimum weight, even bringing all of these numbers to the minimum specs. <clears throat> On the, t on the surface of the tappet, sometimes I'll sand that with a piece of 400 grit sandpaper if there's any swirl marks or nicking in that part to have a nice clean flat surface. Here's the thickness of the lifter. You can't really change it. Um, so the minimum is slightly less than that. I have brought lifters to the spec before, but there's really no advantage in it. You would have to get some serious weight off of the lifter to see an effect. Now we're moving on to the camshaft. And again, um, they're giving you a heel to tip 
measurement of the intake lobe and the exhaust lobe. Again, we can't add any material onto the camshaft. Um, sometimes the end of the camshaft is very rough and I'll take a sand, piece of sandpaper and just break the edge of the camshaft so when it's riding on the lifter, it's nice and smooth. Okay, more measurements on the camshaft. You can look at these in the USAC manual. Um, <clears throat> they're giving you a length of the camshaft. You can't alter that, even though it would be nice if you could, because you can make the cam move outward, which would give you more retarded cam timing. But the measurements are so tight that there's nothing really um, to be gained. Um, <clears throat> I like to just sand the edges of that cam so that it's nice and smooth on the lifter. Again, the cam, I would oil that big gear, oil the two ends of the cam um, before installing into the engine. This is another number um, of the end of the cam, which they're not giving you very much on that it's just we're referencing all these numbers so that we make sure that we're 100 percent legal and to show you guys all the numbers in the usac um, tech manual now moving on to the block we make sure to put oil in that um, cam bearing surface the tappets are now in we put oil on the top of those and we're about to put um, the camshaft into the engine. Now we bring the engine to top dead center to get the timing marks to line up for the camshaft. We've already cut this block so we're pretty close to zero deck on the block. We're just assembling the block. Again, I can't stress enough that oil, oil, oil on everything um, is going to make this engine on startup run really good. Now we're gonna line up the cam, the two gears, the camshaft and the crank gear. The crank gear has a little dot on it and the cam has a dot on it. And you wanna line up those two marks. That is your cam timing. If that gear is put in and it's off a tooth, the engine will not run, if, if you'll even get it to run at all. So I marked it in red marker so you can see how the cam and the crank gear line up. Next we're going to um, oil the bearing in the side cover and we're going to put the side cover on. Here it is with the crank in it, the cam in it, the tappets are in it, and the rod is in it, and the rod is torqued to the correct spec. Now I'm going to point out on the new side cover that um, this is a UT 2.5, and it has that oil slinger built into the side cover. The old 160s did not have that uh, ramp or berm in there to keep the oil from spinning off of the cam. I just noticed this on the UT 2.5 we're building. Now we also put grease on the rubber seal before we put the side cover on so that there is no friction between the crank and the rubber seal. The grease on there usually creates a seal between the um, crank and that seal so the oil can't escape the motor. <clears throat> We're now gonna use a brush and oil the bearings and um, put oil in the, um, the galley for the camshaft. Now we're going to put the side cover onto the engine with the gasket. Make sure your gasket is good. I don't use any gasket sealer in case I have to take this apart. You could put a small layer of grease on the gasket and that acts like gasket sealer and then the engine will come apart a lot easier when you go to take it apart. Now on the side cover bolts, I like to put red Loctite a dab of red Loctite on each bolt and then torque them to the manufacturer's spec. This keeps the cover 
solid on there from coming loose.